Welcome to the 89th episode of the Friday Nightmare Podcast. If you've been following along, you realize that Scott's been delayed in his editing. So if you hear us refer to 2023 and this is 2025, please forgive us and enjoy the retro playback of the awesome movies that we watched that I'm sure you've all forgot about now, which is why we're here. But I am one half of your hosting team, Heather Powell, coming to you from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And with me, as always, is... Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Sports Creek, in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. I'm fully vaxxed, boosted, and waxed, and ready to climax. And if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. the man with the humongous <clears throat> ego, a.k.a. Scott Housen, a.k.a. Scotty Too Hottie, a.k.a. Spanky, a.k.a. the man that takes as much damn time as he wants to edit the podcast so y'all can kiss my ass. <laughs> Hey, Scott, remember a couple of years ago when we got together for Halloween? Remember how great that was? Remember? Yeah, I remember the <laughs> back in four time. <laughs> when you and Erica, we came up and we went and we did pumpkin blasting. Not not the kind of pumpkin blasting that you thought we were going to do. You were I was, a little disappointed. I was, doing that. I was doing that in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> yeah, you were like, mm, this gives me some ideas for when I get home later. Um <clears throat> We are a month away uh, off of spooky season. We just passed American Thanksgiving. Um, so Scott's fucking fluffy and full of yum yums right now. How much right. do you think? How many pounds of food do you think you ate, Scott? Oh, I'm guessing probably about a pound and a half. That's that's it? Yeah, I didn't eat a lot. Like oh, I really? I mean, I ate a decent amount, but like I don't overstuff myself anymore. Well, you had like eight dinners to have, so you had to like fucking pace it, right? Like it right. was, it was an adventure. But that's what the two teenage boys are for. They can they can make sure that they cover off whatever you two can't handle, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got together a month ago. <laughs> Eric came up for Halloween. It was fun. Uh, yeah, was holy fun. shit! It was uh, yeah, it is almost a month ago. Damn. Yeah, and since then we watched a bunch of movies, which should be real fun because one of these we watched together, and it That's should right. be well, two of them we yeah, watched. Yeah, two. Together. Um, and it should be real fun to like fucking <laughs> go back in time and talk about it because it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, yeah, but so hopefully, a- yeah, hopefully now. I'll get back into the regular routine. We shall see. Don't quote me on it, people. Yeah. I will try. Nobody get excited, okay? Like, <laughs> let's, let's keep our just like a nice long term relationship. You keep your expectations low here, okay? Like, damn right. If you do the dishes, we do the fucking dishes. Just get off our case, okay? We don't we don't need your judge. We haven't even recorded since you came up and visited. It's yeah. literally been that long. Yeah, it's been about a month and a half since we recorded last. I think. Like it's like. It's just, you know, we've had some stuff happen, um, and it's been, and it's been a slice, like, we all have the slice of life that's dealt to us, but I think things are slowing down for 2023 anyway, so we have a fucking shitload of movies that we're going to talk about. On yeah, this I think majority of these are all yours. Are they really? No, you yes. saw, you saw the first one. Yeah, I've seen the first, like, I think I've watched seven or eight on this list. Because remember, this is vintage 2023 shit right here. Exactly. We're, we're like, we're basically hipsters. Are right, you a blanket around your shoulders? Is that what's around your shoulders right now? Yeah, it's uh, the heat over on this side of the basement's not really kicking in that well. Like, it's over by the living room side that's a little warmer. You look, you kind of look like you're going on a pilgrimage. Like, you <laughs> like you have your blanket on and you're like, it has been 18 days. <laughs> I have last made <laughs> made settlement. <laughs> I, I don't know you're wrapping it now. It looks good. Look at that. Yeah, it's like snowing outside pretty good. So yeah, it's chilly day today. Fucking hashtag Michigan. I was watching a football game yesterday, of course, American college ball, and it was like a foot of snow, and they were still making these kids fucking play. It's fun. what's wrong with your country? Honestly, Scott, what is wrong with your country? People are too damn obsessed with that damn sport. Fuck them. Not like us who like horror movies. <laughs> right. 
No, we're not in a bad obsession. At least we're nice and warm and toasty while we're watching. Yeah, yeah, and way cooler than football. But yeah, yeah right. we're gonna we're gonna try to go through these 2023s of the 18 billion ones that we have. We'll start off with the first one, which is you know an entry into a franchise. Most of you may have heard about it from early October 2023, but that is Saw 10. Um, I think you watched it first, did you not, Scott? Yes, I believe I did. All right, I should look it up here because I think it's still I think it's out of theaters by this point. Fuck, I would. Oh yeah, it's gone out of theaters now. Like, can you imagine? They're still like, <laughs> no, keep Saw 10 alive. This bad boy's coming in at 118 minute runtime, which I felt was long for a Saw film. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, um, no, that seems to be about like the uh, around that for some of the sequels. Really? So okay. It's not, yeah, but um, uh, I didn't feel it drug at all in this one. I don't know. I watched it so long ago, I can barely remember. So anyway. <laughs> Everyone gave this that we know three and a half stars. Like Matt Wood gave it three and a half stars. Tim Davis gave it three and a half stars. Um, yeah, I like name three people. I'm like, that's every two people. That's everyone we know. We know nobody else. <laughs> yeah, I think I gave it like an eight out of ten. Like I really did. I, you know, I, like I think I said on the last podcast or the podcast before that I watched the entire franchise just to kind of recap everything, and I enjoyed the franchise way more this time around or that time around. And then watching this just kind of tied some things together, and yeah, I really dug this. I thought it was a very good sequel, especially for coming out like you know so many years after the final cha- or, uh, Jigsaw. And can we just give some credit to Tobin Bell, who somehow doesn't age enough that no one really gets upset about it in a fucking horror film he's in? We all are just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, this makes sense that this is somewhere between the second and the third, for sure. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, I always find these movies overly preachy. Scott knows I'm not a huge fan. I will say I thought the traps were entertaining. Um, Particularly, there's one with eyes and tubes, which I thought was actually pretty fucking cool. Um, I guess this tried to make a jigsaw a protagonist? Question mark? Yeah, Um, for the most part, because the people in this truly deserved it. Yeah, they did. But I can't get past, like, how righteous he is. That it kind of, it will never be a franchise that I love. I find the character way too righteous. That being said, I think Tobin Bell portrays him well. I think he's a good at what he portrays. I don't put my dislike of the character on Tobin. That's just my own personal. I find him just too preachy. But I think the special effects, practical effects, are always great in these films. They're always fucking fabulous. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. horrible done right you know what i mean um i did the, i asked that question to scott just as he took a big swig of vodka i need water yeah vodka <laughs> but um yeah i i, I think that like once again the traps in this were very clever and uh well done and yeah i, I just dug the story dug the reasoning behind everything and that yeah it just kind of ties in like and once again it's like another horror film that did great in theaters which is awesome yeah it made a lot of money right yeah yeah like uh that and another one we're gonna a couple of other ones we're gonna talk about did really well in theaters which i'm <laughs> happy about and then one not so much because we got a lot of movies to talk about so <laughs> We'll move to the next one. You watch this one, and I still have to watch it because I think I've had you tell me about it multiple times now. Um, so yeah, why don't you bring this little bad boy in? All right. So this one is a Hulu exclusive, and this one's fresh in my brain because we watched it just last, just a couple days ago, I think actually, or last weekend. But uh, that one is The Mill, um, your company for life. A businessman wakes up beside an ancient uh, ancient mill situated in the center of an open-air prison cell with no idea how he got there. Forced to work as a beast of burden to stay alive, he must find a way to escape before the birth of his child. A runtime of 106 minutes. This, you know, most people probably won't categorize this as horror, but I consider it kind of like that survival horror genre that you and I kind of made up in our, like, made up as our version where just someone in a dire situation trying to survive. But yeah, like, I found this to be very intriguing, um, wanting to know what the hell was going on. Uh, the main character was uh, the TSA agent from Get Out. Mm, yes, you told me about that a couple of times. I like that. Yeah, and, uh, but yeah, I thought, like, his acting was really good. Uh, the mystery behind this was very interesting. Um the only thing I was not really a fan of was, like, 
the very end of it, I was wanting a little more, and it kind of left it a bit ambiguous, like just kind of left it up to you to decide what was going on. But everything leading up to that point, I thought was very solid, very tense, very just what the fuck. I, I think this is definitely one to watch and make a decision for yourself, because I think it's just a solid, solid like seven out of ten film. Like I'm definitely uh, not disappointed. I watched it at all. Well, this makes me very happy because I will watch it. It's it's not on any of our friends' plexes, and I don't have no Hulu. So I'm going to have to figure out, maybe it's on Paramount or Crave. Um, I'll have to check those places as well to see if it's uh, on that somewhere. And I'll definitely check it out. It sounds like it's something that I would enjoy. You always see mixed reviews on stuff like this, but I don't know. I'm survival horror to me is very much survival horror. It's like Scott and I trying to survive our everyday life. We would also consider that survival horror. Um, Gas prices, mortgage inflation, like we're living fucking horror every day. So, um, and so this is only available in America, at least on Hulu. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, I believe this is just a Hulu exclusive. Yeah, I'll have to figure out where it's available in Canada because we don't we don't got no Hulu. Well, it's probably it'll probably be on Disney Plus for you guys. Fucking Disney Plus, the one streaming service I refuse to pay for because I pay fucking three hundred dollars a year now in streaming services. I know, right? Streaming services. Anyway, the next movie that we're going to talk about is called Heard. I got, I got you to watch this. Oh man, like a billion years ago now. Ninety-seven minute runtime. Some fight for survival, others fight for control. When a woman trying to outrun her past ends up trapped between a zombie outbreak and warring military groups, she's caught in a world where some fight for survival, but others fight for control. I don't know. I felt like this was just USA all over it. Is it just like every day in the United States, honestly? Pretty much. You know, this is a social political movie that doesn't try to hide it. They're like, yeah, yeah, no, this is this is what it's like in the States. Matt Wood gave it three stars. Dave Bailey gave it three stars. And you gave it three stars. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Three, 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 three. Um, I believe this one was a little more low budget. But it wasn't yeah. super low. It wasn't super high. It was kind of that in-between budget. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. I thought that the characters were good. I thought the story was interesting. I was interested in it, and I thought the 97 runtime, 97 minute runtime was good. Um, I just remember being like, the ending was like, meh. Thoughts? Yeah, this one, uh, from what I can remember, um, I liked the characters, especially the two, uh, the girlfriends. Um, but I was, this just felt like another typical zombie apocalypse movie. Mm. Really wasn't much new brought to the table here. I just kind of, yeah, it was okay at best. That's a fair way to state it. I think if you like zombie apocalypse films mixed with military militia, mixed with USA politics, I think you'll enjoy this film. It's available on Voodoo, Google Play, Amazon, Microsoft Store, and YouTube. I, I don't think you should rent it unless you like those kind of things. I think you might find it a little lower budget on, on the lower end budget side. And I always find low budget movies are always going for like five ninety nine, six ninety nine dollars rentals because they're trying to make some fucking money. Um, right. I don't know if I would recommend a six ninety nine <laughs> rental for this. Yeah. Maybe wait to see until it drops the price. Yeah, say so wait till it's either streaming somewhere for free or for $2, 2 or $3. Yeah. American, Canadian, that would be about 50 bucks. So <laughs> right. we're going to start one. Uh, which, did you watch this one? I did not, because I have not heard anything about it. I know you watched it, but I Mm. didn't hear anything. I didn't hear any positive praise about it, so I just never bothered. Yeah, I don't even know if we talked about it. I think I told you, watch it, it's it's about guns. So this is called Night of the Hunted. This came out on Shudder in October. It's a 95-minute runtime. The tagline is, everyone's a target. When an unsuspecting woman stops at a remote gas station in the dead of night, she made the play thing of a so she's made the plaything of a sociopath sniper with a secret vendetta to survive she must not only dodge his bullets but fight for her life but also figure out who wants her dead and why this is an example of a simple setting done right oh okay um, there are two basic scenes or locations in this movie a hotel and the gas station there is very few characters in this movie there's characters that are introduced um, and you get emotionally attached to characters that are only on screen for a very short period of time. 
this filmmaker did a great job of creating a scenario that anyone could relate to that's ever stopped at a gas station to get gas in the middle of nowhere. Um, hmm. It's perfectly made at 95 minutes. Where I think this film will lose people is it sits right in the middle of the political spectrum. It talks a lot about wokeism. It talks a lot about right-wingism. And it talks a lot about fighting back and forth in terms of opinion and political powers. It also brings in ethical discussions about choices that people make. Um, it's a very, very interesting film. I think this is something on Shutter that people aren't going to jump all over because it's such a simplistic film, but I think that it's really, really well done. And whoever wrote this, directed it, picked the locations, knew what they were doing, and they really made it nice and tight and concise. And I think that says a lot about a film. Um, again, with Shutter this year, they may not have found the most incredible films ever, but they're bringing a variety. And this was a very good survival horror, in my opinion, done right. The rankings for this film go anywhere from Brian Stitcher giving it four stars, Matt Woods giving it three and a half, Dave Bailey giving it three, Kate Pollock giving it two and a half. So I, I probably sit somewhere around the three and a half to four. I really did enjoy this film. And Scott, I think you and Erica should watch it because I do think it's interesting. And I think from, you know, after watching the torture that was quicksand, this is much a much better survival film, and you will be definitely invested a lot more in the characters in this. Okay. Yeah, because I and just I, haven't heard anything about it, so I, yeah, I just kind of skipped over it, but yeah, I, I'll check I it out. would say watch it, and I think for Erica, because Erica values a lot about decision makings, I think she'll understand why this person makes the decisions that they do. I think this is a film that if you honestly put yourself into that role, you get the decisions that this individual is making. Okay, nice. Right? So the next one we actually watched together. Yeah. I'll say, you want me to pick this one up then? I'll let you bring it in. Why not? All right. So this is probably like a movie that no one's ever heard of. I'm getting going to just take a wild guess there. That is uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. So, yeah, this became available to us uh, the same night that we came down and visited you, or came up to visit you. Um got a 110 minute runtime and it says can you survive five nights recently fired and desperate for work a troubled young man named mike agrees to take a position as a night security guard at an abandoned theme restaurant freddy fazbear's pizzeria but he soon discovers that nothing at freddy's is what it seems um so yeah this is based off the popular video game franchise five nights at freddy's that a lot of the younger generation really got into um, we were excited for it because the trailer looked fun. It was a Bloom House film. Um, however, I just thought it was okay. Um, maybe, because uh, I knew a lot about the video games, but I didn't know, like, I'm not a big fan, so maybe there's stuff that I missed in it. But I just found it to be a bit uh, bit too long with the runtime. I kind of felt the 110 mm -hmm. minutes, and I was hoping for it to be a little more violent like not necessarily gory but just a little more violent for you know this but still had some good moments in it i didn't hate my time with it it's just i think this was uh one of those that is definitely for the younger audience a hundred percent and just uh, in case i missed i only i i mentioned that night of the hunted was on shutter it's on all the shutters so if you have shutter you can watch night of the hunted anyway okay um, yeah, I agree with you, Scott. Now, my friend's son, who does the music for this podcast, this was the first horror movie that he went to see at the theater with his buddies. And he was messaging me how much he liked it. So he really enjoyed it. He's So I agree with you. I think this is a film that is geared towards a younger generation entry into horror. And you know what? That is fine. Yeah, you know, absolutely. He loved it, and honestly, his love of it probably made me like it more because he thought it was so cool. Uh, shout yeah. out to Matthew Lillard. Great to see him in this film. I think he really was actually a shining light in this film for me. Even though he's not in it a lot, when he is in it, he kind of steals the show. Oh, yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, I was going to say, this is one of the other theatrical releases where this was a horror movie that dominated the box offices for a couple of weeks. Like, it was doing fucking, it was making bank. Like, this is, I think this is the most successful Blumhouse movie or whatever I heard. Wow, so, saying something. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, kudos. Like, I am, you know, keep on bringing these types of movies, even if they're not for me. Let horror thrive. Like, this was definitely, uh, like, I I had fun with it. It just was, you know, 
not my cup of tea. Like I think I like uh, Willie's Wonderland better, but that's because it's more my style. And I feel like that's more made for adults. I feel like Banana Splits and Willie's Wonderland are made for adults. I really do feel like this was made for entry-level horror for kids. I feel like this is something that, you know, if there's a future Scott and Heather out there right now that are 14 years old and they one day do a horror podcast, they're going to talk about how this film got them into horror movies. Exactly. Like, hands down, right? So I think that that's where it stands. I did think the plot was interesting. I did think the movie dragged a little too long on some things, uh, but I did like the reveal at the end. I, I did like kind of the story and how it concluded and yeah there's a lot of things that don't make a heck of a lot of sense throughout this movie but you can kind of you gotta suspend disbelief sometimes in some films right especially when you have animation characters or robots coming to life um this did inspire me though to watch uh, a video that talked about the battles between Chuck E. Cheese and <laughs> Showtime Pizza and let me tell you looking back at those commercials from 1980 for Chuck E. Cheese this movie ain't far off on how creepy that shit was. So oh, look, and look up Showbiz Pizza freaking animatronics, dear oh, Lord. Oh, I saw them. Terrified. They were They're fucking terrified. weird. Like, it, anyway, so I do think that this is on to something, and I do hope we see more of these kind of movies, because I do think they kind of tie into that, like, 80s robotic craze. And I remember going to Chuck E. Cheese and watching the robotics and thinking it was so cool. Right. And as an adult now, I, I couldn't imagine taking my friend's kids and being like, this is fucked. What the fuck right. is going Robots, right like i think i would have a much different view of it so i did enjoy it for that reason it's out of theaters now anyway up here i, I don't know if it's still in theaters for you down there no it's been pushed out at this point i think okay so it's available to rent on amazon apple tv google play amazon video cineplex here in canada um i, I don't know i think this is worth the money i think even if you're not I don't know. If you're expecting Willy's Wonderland, don't rent this. But if you're expecting like a PG version of Willy's Wonderland, this is a fun fucking film. And I recommend it. I, I do think it's it's enjoyable. And I think if you got teenagers or young kids in that preteen stage, they may love this movie. And they yeah. may really dig it. So I completely out, agree. Right? And the next one. Now, did you watch this one? Uh, Origins? Yeah. Yes, I did. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this. So on Halloween, this was dropped on the Shuddy. Hell House LLC Origins, the Carmichael Manor. This is a 98-minute runtime. It's found footage, much like the other Hell House films. Every story has an origins, just like Scott and ours, my origins. That's we were right. bitter, lonely horror fans. And together, we take over the world, releasing episodes once every two months. So- <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what, Scott? We are quality, all right? Yeah, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. (laughs) We don't just fuck with our shirts on. We take it all off. We give a lap dance. We set the stage. I just leave the socks on. Yeah, well, that's different. It's cold in Michigan and up here in Ontario. We don't have a choice. We don't want our beanies to freeze. Um, A group of cold cold case investigators are going to a haunted house. At the Carmichael <laughs> Manor, sites of the grisly and unresolved murders of the Carmichael family back in the 80s, 1980s, not 1800, 1980s. <laughs> After four nights, the group was never heard from again. Much like what would happen if Scott and I and Erica went away. We would never hear from Scott or I again because Erica would be like, fuck this shit. <laughs> like, let's be and my dumbass yeah. would go into abandoned places and get in trouble. You would. You would definitely. Grave Encounters is basically your life story waiting to happen. It pretty um, much is. Right? So what is discovered on their found footage is even more disturbing than anything found on the Hell House tapes or Scott's film videos. So what? No, just kidding. I just added that. So Scotty, <laughs> you, did you like this? I feel like we talked about it so long ago. I fucking love this. This oh, is, to me, this is the second best of the Hell House series. Uh, Hell House LLC being the first one, and then this one. And I think it just adds a lot to the lore and story of what really went down and how all this came to be. And um, I thought they did a great job with this. They did, you know, being the found footage, I had no issues with, like, how the found footage was presented. There's no, like, they did it in, like, a documentary style, so there's a little bit of music added, which makes sense in that style. 
And uh, no, I thought it was fucking creepy as shit. It took a little bit to get into. I will give it that. Mm. And like, I know some people were like, I've heard some people complain about like, yeah, not really getting into mm-hmm. it at first, but when it starts kicking into gear, it's fucking creepy as hell. Like I really dug this one a lot. Well, I, generally speaking, agree. Um, I am not the biggest Hell House fan. I I like the series. I I did find the beginning quite boring to the point that I, I did message you and I was like, hey, um, does this get better? <laughs> you were like, yeah. yeah, 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 keep watching. And I was like, okay. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. I did think there was some genuinely well-deserved jump scares in this. I thought they handled the concept of flashbacks well. Not every film can do that well. This was a good film that bridged the 80s and today well. Um, would it would it be a go-to for me to watch again? Probably not. But I think that's more of my lack of loving the series than it is the quality of the film. Um, we had some friends that have watched it that all kind of gave it some praising reviews. Let's see here. Tim Davis, three and a half stars. Sexy Matt Wood, four stars. Rob Humphreys, the hump, three and a half stars. Oh, Rob and Tim came together. It's like, I know, I was going to say, look at that. They both like something at the same time. Beyond sees too much. That's them <laughs> holding each other while they watch this film. And, oh, there's Scotty giving his, like, peace sign with a big whopping four stars. i probably sit three stars, and that's not because I don't think the film's great. It's just that's where I stand with this series. Yeah, um, so you weren't, like, you're not as big of a fan of the series. Like, I I love the series, so this was, like, something I was excited for. And I watch, I usually try to watch all of them around Halloween time. And, hey, that's the thing, right? If it's your jam, it's your jam. Um, this, this movie you can find on the Shuddy. If you have the Shuddy, no reason not to watch this. Um, you, you gotta watch it. AMC Plus, AMC Amazon, um, but really it's mostly on the Shuddy. So you got the Shuddy, watch it. And then I would absolutely recommend watching the other Hell Houses. I know Brandon Orlick, formerly of the Exploding Heads movie podcast, did the same thing you did, Scott. And he said it really increased his enjoyment of this film. Oh, I'm so, sure. You know, I think there's something to be said with, like, keeping yourself up to date on what's going on, right? So, yeah. yeah that's on the study for anyone who's interested. All right. And I will jump into the next one, which was one I was very excited about. And that is Suitable Flesh, directed by Joe Lynch. With a 99-minute runtime, stars Barbara Crampton and Heather Graham. And uh, who do you think you are? After murdering her young patient, a once-esteemed psychiatrist... Uh, no, that is a terrible synopsis. Um, that just kind of gives spoilers like in it, so I'm not even going to read that. But uh, the synopsis is basically a psychiatrist runs into a patient of hers that seems to be showing signs of schizophrenia or something along those lines, multiple personal, multiple uh, personality disorders. And she ends up getting kind of intrigued and wants to help him. Then, well, things kind of go in a very weird sexual route that turns Lovecraftian. Um, but yeah, this is being a love, it's based off a Lovecraft story, I believe. Uh, Brian Sammons from uh, ABCs of Horror would know for sure. Um, but I am a huge fan of Joe Lynch, for one. I love every one of his movies, and I just enjoy his personality and his style of filmmaking. So I was excited about this. Plus, I had Heather Graham and Barbara Crampton. And, yeah, this movie was fucking great to me. Um, this is top ten material for me. Um, I will say... The first half of the film feels kind of like you're watching a soft core porn, but then by the time the other the second half happens, you really get to see the acting chops of Heather Graham shine through, and holy shit, she does such an amazing job, and it just gets fucking wild and crazy from there, and definitely brings in some very... Lovecraft vibes and some good gore and keeps you wondering what the hell is happening. Like, this was a very solid just horror film for me. Like, I loved it. Well, I appreciate the praise because, Scott, you know I got about 30 minutes into this and I haven't gone back. 
Okay, I was wondering if you right. ended up going back or not. No, and I and when you say top ten, that tells me I need to go back. Um, I don't know why it was just I felt like it was so cheesy and stupid, and I felt like I could call the plot that it really turned me off. But when I hear you say this is top ten material, I trust your judgment, despite what we may have thought from other episodes. <laughs> and I, will, I should at least watch it. I should at least watch it. And like you've got quality here. You got Heather Graham. You got Barbara Crampton. Like you got you got good actors. Actors, yes. right? So like it's it's quality film. So yeah, this um, one seems to be all over the board with ratings too. Oh yeah, let's hear some. Well, Tim Davis gave it two and a half. Um, mm. Our sexy Matt Wood gave it four out of five. I, mm, I think I gave it a think I gave it four and a half out of five. Uh, let's see if there's anybody else that we. Uh, let's see. Uh, someone named Adam gave it three and a half. See, it's been around like two and a half to four stars is what I'm seeing throughout. And it's like a good mix of all. Interesting. So it all just really depends on, I guess, your style, like what you like and whatnot. Um, but this is available on Apple TV, Vudu, Google Play Movies, Amazon Video, and YouTube all for rent. Well, that is good to know. And um, Matt Wood gives me a wood. Oh, he! I, I've got I got a wood as soon as I see his mm, face. You gotta be careful though, because he's really sensitive about sex. I know he is. He is a little bit, isn't he? He's saving himself for something. We're not quite sure what, but one day Matt will have that special little flower taken. Um, <laughs> The next movie I'm going to talk about is uh, one of the weirdest fucking movies I've seen this year. Yeah, it this is one I still have not got to see yet. I have so fucking weird. Yeah, bring Erica on. She can talk about it. I'm sure she'll definitely want to jump in the minute and talk about it. Um, the Exorcist Believer 2023. Okay, here's the thing. And I know we may lose some listeners over this. Oh, boy. I like the original Exorcist. I like it. I think it's a good movie. But I'm not in love with the original Exorcist. I think it's great. I think at the time it was like shocking and it's well done. But do I personally go to it as one of my favorite exorcism films? I do not. There's other exorcism films that I personally enjoy more. No, and I, I get that. Because it's, right. it's a very, for one, the original exorcist is very slow burn. It is. And I just feel like, I don't know, maybe because it's talked about so much, but it has its place in history, cinematic history, for a reason. No doubt, no argument, solid movie, way better than the fucking sequel, which was a piece of shit that was torturous to get through. Yeah, I never um, even bothered with that. <laughs> oh, man. I got to watch the third one, though, because I hear the third one's mint. Yes, third one is good. Third right? one is solid. So, all right. Do you believe when two girls disappear into the woods and return three days later with no memory of what happened to them, the father of one of the girls seeks out Chris McNeil, who's been living under a rock for the past 40 years, apparently, <laughs> and who's been, well, no, she's been on every talk show imagine, maybe, who's been forever altered by what happened to her daughter 50 years ago. I don't know who wrote this screenplay. But it was the most confusing screenplay I have ever seen before in my life. I'm not quite sure what the point of this movie was. Was it to bring Chris McNeil back into the picture, even though she really wasn't in it that much? Um, I will say the two child actors that played the two young ladies that were possessed were exceptional. They were quite good. Um, Lydia Duet and Olivia Markham. Phenomenal acting job by these two ladies. Excellent. I hope they get more work after this. I'm going to give... Okay, this, this had every Christian type of fucking spiritual leader in it at some point. Oh, boy. And, like, Erica will tell you there's a certain scene that is almost comical because they're all in it. And it looks like it was filmed on a VHS camcorder that just had really good filters. Like, it's just, this movie was so fucking weird. I don't understand the point of this film. I really, truly don't. I don't get the beginning part that was tied in, the, uh, the two sub-stories that were tied in. I don't get why these little girls ran off and did this fucking seance. I don't get why we had, like... A hodgepodge of Christian faith thrown into this. This was a fucking weirdo fucking movie. And then we get some random guest 
at the end of it. And I just think it's fucking weird. This is fucking weird. It's not even like where I was angry about the nun because I thought it was so stupid and it didn't make any sense. Like this doesn't make any sense either, but I feel like it doesn't make any sense because no one could make up their fucking mind on what they wanted to do in the movie. Like they were just like, everyone was fighting over the script and then they just handed it in. It was like, well, let's just hope it makes money. Um, yeah, it's weird as fuck. Weird as fuck. So ratings for this film. Matt Wood gave it three stars. Good for you, Matt. Yeah, Tim just <laughs> gave it three. Awesome, Tim. Um, Rob Humphreys gave it three. Dave Bailey, finally some fucking common sense, gave it two. Um, I, this wow. is a solid two star for me. I, I, I think there's some good scenes. I think giving it three stars based on these young ladies' performance is worth it. These young ladies, as I said, I think they did a phenomenal fucking job. Excellent work to two young ladies. But otherwise, this movie's weird as shit, Scott. It is fucking weird as shit and confusing. Please watch it because we need to, we need to talk about it at the end of the year. Okay. Yeah, I, I will try to get it, uh, get to it because yeah, I was originally holding off to watch it until uh, I could watch it with Erica, and then I found out she ended up watching it while I was away one day, and I was like, all right, well now I'll just watch this uh, when I get some free time at work or something, throw it on in the background. You were like, wow, thanks, Erica. Wow. Yep. I have been betrayed. Oh, all right, God. all right. Um, the next one is the next one, me. No, it's you. Yep. Speaking of another oh, exorcism film that was not so great, <laughs> uh, this one is oh. an indie film called Courtney Gets Possessed. Uh, and in sickness and in hell, a bumbling wedding party must battle the forces of hell when a bride becomes possessed by the devil the night before her wedding. Yeah, this movie was just... It was something. I'm not sure what it was trying to be, because it definitely is trying to be a comedy. It fails on every level of that. There was nothing funny uh, about this. Awkward. And it tries to be a little bit of horror, and it really fails on that as well. This was just the entire time I'm watching it, I'm just going, I'm not hating it, but I'm not liking it. I am like straight down the line with this one. I just found this just, it's there. I, but it's not something I would recommend. Like I've forgotten a lot of it already. Cause it's just like, and I just watched this I think week and a half ago. And yeah, it just, it wasn't, wasn't worth my time. Honestly, like I wouldn't even say it's worth a rental. Where can um, people find it? If they want to watch it, it is on Voodoo and Amazon Video to rent. Oh, yeah. So is The Exorcist. If for some reason, Believer, you want to watch it, it's also there. Uh, Good to know. To <laughs> and Cineplex. Oh, and you can even buy it for $24. I don't know why you're in there fucking oh, right much. Wanted I'm to not that. even going to watch the movie. I'm just going to straight up buy it. Oh, God. Just because of your raving review. Don't do it. Don't do it. You'll be so confused. <laughs> All right, this next one is a Netflix. This is really more of a mystery than it is a horror movie, but I really enjoyed it. Um, it's called The Deadly Invitation. An eccentric millionaire, Olivia, sends her half-sister, Agatha, and a group of old acquaintances a mysterious invitation for a weekend on her yacht, where they will discover the true motive behind this invitation and the celebration of a murder. Definitely... Um, more of a mystery thriller, but I, if you're looking for a little bit of a break in a horror, but something that's kind of along the lines of Glass Onion, uh, I found this really fun. I thought it was really cute. It's, uh, it's pretty short human time here. It's only a 93 minute runtime. And if you got the Netflix, it's, uh, it's a nice little treat. It's a Spanish film. And I thought the characters were funny. I thought the dialogue was clever. So a little bit of a horror break in here. Um, if you like some thriller mystery shit with a little bit of comedy, it is called A Deadly Invitation on the Netflix. All right. Yeah, I have not even heard of that one. Oh, yeah. It's, it, well, you don't have Netflix. No, that's, yeah, that's true. I always forget right. I have Netflix because I barely ever go on there anyways. Right. Now, did you watch Project Eerie? Yes, I was going to say. Yep, I watched nice. this uh, same night I watched Courtney Get Possessed, uh, Suitable Flesh, that I watched this. Nice. What did you think of this? I'll let you lead it in. And then you can tell All me. right. So, yeah, this one is Project Eerie. Uh, run, it has a runtime of 76 minutes. This Halloween, the veil between worlds is thinner than ever. On Halloween 2020, Jesse and Jacob Warner disappeared while live streaming on social media. This is that live stream. Very bland synopsis there. Um, 
It really, they make it sound like it takes place on Halloween. I mean, it, I guess it does for about two seconds in the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. Uh, the rest of this is trying to be VHS with like the... Uh, if the you sound- ordered VHS from Wish.com. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, because yeah, this is like a uh, found footage anthology. Um, yeah. I think it had three, four stories, I think. And um, yeah, I didn't mind it, but it does the uh, the found footage no-no of kind of ruining the rules of found footage. Because mm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. there's one story where it's found footage, found, found, but <laughs> no way it could be found beats <laughs> uh, the purpose of that um the audio quality this could be the copy i was watching was in and out in spots it was just kind of hard to hear in some stories uh and then there was one story about an amish community i won't get any more details about it but i just made sure to look for details to see if this was truly an amish community or if there would be some sort of electricity in the background and yeah i seen electrical lights and stuff like that so i'm going yeah, you could have, you know, cropped that a little bit just to hide the lights on the ceiling or something. But minor little nitpicks against like a movie that just is very low budget. Um, but it's it was an easy watch. I didn't mind the stories. And they just wasn't anything that blew me away. I I second you. I uh, Matt wrote for three and a half stars. Reviewed by Matt Wood. Love an FF movie. He needs found footage, not fuck. Film because Matt doesn't like sex. Good setup for a collection of weird fuck film. I mean, found footage shorts. All quite creepy. All well done. Deserves a wraparound too, which I have decent wraparound too, which I appreciated. Seven lost kids out of ten is what he gave it here. I think three stars is where I stand with you, Scott. I like the effort they put into this. Some of these stories were actually quite good. I yeah, actually okay. thought they were creepy. Yeah, I thought so too. Like, yeah, I just uh, I think my nitpicking just because of my love for found footage, my nitpicking of some things just kind of mm. took away from it a little bit. But like, yeah. take those little nitpicks out, and like, I thought the stories themselves were actually pretty decent and creepy. Absolutely, it's available on Amazon to rent. I think if you really like found footage, this is worth a rental. It's worth your time to watch. Um, if you're not a big found footage fan, I would say skip over this one because you're probably not going to like it. Yeah, and. I'll say it's definitely if you're especially if you're a found footage fan, it's definitely worth at least checking out, especially if you try to watch everything found footage. But it's and nothing it's nothing everything. that'll blow you away. Not like Scott and I. Yeah. Especially uh, Scott. And this next one I have not seen. You haven't seen They Wait in the Dark? No. Are they That's are they me outside right your house. That's me outside your house. <laughs> I see I see you peeking in my basement window right now, weirdo. Like, Hi Scott. <laughs> my like all recording stuff that outside there could be like why is Heather outside? Like, I didn't know she was cold. coming up for the weekend. <laughs> she you weren't going to let her in. You must be cold and miserable out there. What the hell are you doing? We reenact let the right one in, and I have, like, blood coming down my, my face, but it's just actually, like, <laughs> like salsa. <laughs> my doctor's like, <laughs> Love it. Anyway, they wait in the dark, also known as Scott and I outside nightclubs. Amy, a young woman, is on the run with her younger, with her young son Adrian from her abusive ex-girlfriend. When the past rises up to haunt them, they must confront the forces threatening them from both inside and out. This movie is an 85-minute runtime. Matt Wood says it's not a horror. Oh, why don't you, like, eat my pussy, Matt? Because it is. (laughs) Not a horror film, he said. How is this not a horror film, Matt? There's a fucking ghost in it. How is that not a horror film? Matt? Matt. Honestly, Matt. Oh, Matt, stop Matt. drinking. Stop going to the pubs all the time. You're thinking movies that literally have a ghost in them aren't horror films. Anyway. You know, it's funny how Matt can change like that with me, huh? One minute, I'm like, Matt's the best. And the next minute, I'm like, and you're fucking good. <laughs> it's, it's a love-hate relationship with you, too. Oh, yeah. No, I love him all the time. He's just fun to tease. Um, yeah. This is low budget. I actually, there was a plot twist in this that I didn't fucking see coming. I'll be real. I, uh, there were some characters who I thought that they were who they were, but they weren't. And I thought that was really cool. Now, I do think there is something that is a very full, fair statement here. 
a, mo a movie full of miserable, unpleasant characters doing miserable and unpleasant things to each other. Not no. wrong. Not wrong. Um, but I do think this movie, for a low-budget film, really turns the cheek and, and takes it in a direction that you don't necessarily see coming. And I give it credit for that. Uh, I think there's some good ways that they use their filming and their effects in this film. I think the acting is decent. You're not supposed to like these characters. That's the point. Um, they did a good job of that. Do I think this is a must watch? <sighs> if you were fans of movies that came out like Lucky, or you also enjoyed the uh, It Comes at Night. Is it was it, it Comes at Night, the one with the, the woman that got attacked and it was a monster and no one would believe her about the monster? Uh, Came out of oh, uh, Take Back the Night. Take Back the Night. Um, if you like those kind of films, then you will enjoy this. Very simple. Okay. If, if you don't, then you're probably not going to like this film too much. It is available on Apple TV, Google Play, Voodoo, Microsoft Store, YouTube. If you like what I said, then it's worth a rental. Um, if you're like Matt Wood and you don't understand how ghost people horror movies, then you may not like it. <laughs> um, Matt's like, or, I'm so mad at you. I'm going to go have some more pints. And I'm like, oh, I'm jealous that I'm not having yummy pints and chips and <laughs> like, like, even look at his picture have you seen his picture here he's like a hot dj look at this oh i know he's a sexy motherfucker how is he even allowed to be that good looking like how is that even allowed honestly i i bet his wife's a fucking smoke show too right oh guaranteed it's like you and erica when you guys walk into a room power couple yeah. power power beautiful couple and i'm just an ugly duckling oh, but one day i'll grow into a bit of beautiful swan sky you One day. already are, Heather. Thank you. A beautiful swan, swan with like kind of like a limp. <laughs> <laughs> Has had a lot of eggs, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Good lord. I think if you like Lucky and Take Back the Night, this may be a movie for you. It is available, as I said, in all those streaming services. To check it out. Oh, sorry. They Wait in the Dark. You watched it too? Oh, no, you want to watch it. Yeah, I just added it to my watch list because oh, we were talking okay. about it. I was like, what? Did you just watch it now? <laughs> yeah, I was watching it while you were talking. Holy shit, guy, you're on fucking fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next one is you. All right. Oh, right. Yeah, wait, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's you. Yep, so this is another one that you, me, and Erica watched together uh, at your place. Yes. And... This has been one of the very highly talked about uh, international films of the year. Um, and that is When Evil Lurks, directed by Demian Rugna, who also did Terrified, that I believe we covered on our Paranormal Investigators episode with oh, Dave C. Sure from did. Exploding Heads. Uh, and I think this is his sophomore effort. And so he's an Ar Argentinian director. Uh the synopsis is, there's no point in praying. Residents of a small rural town discover that a demon is about to be born amongst them. They desperately try to escape before the evil is born, but it may be too late. Uh, this has a 99-minute runtime. Holy fucking shit, this movie is fucking awesome. <laughs> it's intense. It is brutal. It is intense. There is things in this film that I... I don't think I would have ever thought I'd see on screen. My jaw was left hanging open for several of these moments. This does not cut away from hardly anything, and the story is so good. And these characters are a mix of, like, likable but dislikable at the same Like, feel like real human characters. Yes, that's a good way to describe it, Scotty. Where they have their own flaws, but they are but they are trying to do good, and they just keep making mistakes. But my God, this movie just it has you at the edge of your seat the entire time. Like this movie actually left gave me chills. Like I'm this is in my top. Uh, I would say for sure top five, probably top three of the year. This movie is amazing and intense. And if no one has seen it yet, uh, and you do a top, and you do a podcast, and you do a top ten, make sure you watch this one. This is a Shutter original, so Shutter brought it, brought their A game back for this one. If you haven't seen it, we got one question: What are you waiting, waiting for? for? <laughs> 
Yeah, this is a really good film. This will be on people's top tens. It's gory. It's gross. It's it's like how the Spanish do it. You know what I mean? Like no fucking yeah. holds bars. They no, make it it com- they don't make it comfortable for you. <laughs> no, 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 no. So if you're into that shit and like the reviews don't lie, four stars from Matt Wood. Uh, good old Paul Stevenson from Who Will Survive? Oh yeah, Podcast. good old Paul Stevenson. Rob Humphrey only gave me three because Rob hates life. Uh, <laughs> then we got good old Tim Davis. Tim Davis gave it four and a half. I am right up there. I think it's a good four, four and a half star film. This film's fucking awesome. And at 99 minutes, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It, it fucking gets it done. Yeah, it's pretty much uh, pedal to the metal from the beginning. It doesn't let up. And yeah, I think I'm at a four and a half and I have a feeling this will be a five out of five. Like when I, if I try to get some rewatches in before before the end of the year. No, the rewatches are a thing in the past. That's old Scotty. I still do them occasionally. (laughs) I still do them occasionally to figure out my top 10, but, but it all depends on how much time I have, especially this year. 2023 seems to be slowing down. So I might actually have time. I uh, I can't wait to read this next movie. But this, but you can find the evil works on the study. And, and uh, the rest of these it. movies until the very last one are all you. Really? Yeah. It's my fucking time to shine. <laughs> Here we go. All right. This next one is called The Hive, and I can't wait to read Matt Wood's review of it. Oh boy. A couple returns home from a night out to find their two sadistic strangers waiting to terrorize them. This is definitely a low budget film. Um, this was, there's two reviews here. One is from David Garrett and the other one's from Matt Wood. I'm going to read Matt Wood's first. This film is dog shit. <laughs> I, think, I think the story is just okay. However, the acting is pretty crappy. The characters are fucking irritating. I hated all of them. I think the point where I was most interested is when I was trying to glance up her skirt. Wow, creeper. You know, maybe if you actually, like, had sex, Matt, you wouldn't be so repressed sexually. Sad, I know. But yet he slut shamed me. Two k- shitty characters in a shitty relationship out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I love his raids. They're really funny. All right. This is David Garrett. He gave it three stars. This is a movie that I got a chance to see thanks to Justin Cook, who sent over a screener. This sounded intriguing, the bit that I read. When I confirmed that this was a horror film in a 2023 agree, 2023 release, I agreed to watch it. Other than that, I came into this one blind. Um, so he kind of breaks down what the couple is doing, but I kind of just want to get to his thoughts. No offense, David, but you're fucking things forever. Um, he gave it a six out of 10 and he kind of says that it's, he basically kind of said what Matt said in a nicer way. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I can't say as much as I'm teasing Matt. I can't really say he's wrong. Um, Don and Nelly in a chat that I'm part of said that this would have been better as a short. And he's probably right. This would have been better as a short. I think there was some good intention here. And I think for low budget, they really did try to use their resources well. But I think the acting and the choice of how characters were to be portrayed would really annoy people. Like, I don't think Matt's wrong with his statements. He has a lot of validity there. I can't say I recommend renting it. I did watch a screener as well. It's an 86 minute runtime. The concept is great, but I just think the execution needs to be better. That's the best way to describe it. So Matt, I, uh, I agree. I concur. The next one is 15 cameras. I, oh, oh no, You're starting to do a robot a bit. Oh, how's it now? Okay. I think it, yeah, it sounds better now. How about now? A little bit robotic. Hmm. Let me try turning off my camera. How about now? Yeah, it sounds better. Okay, we'll do that. If I get bad, tell me. So okay. the next one we're going to talk about is 15 cameras. Okay, Scott, what do you think this is a sequel to? I think this is a sequel to the 13 and 14 cameras. <gasps> oh, you so smart. I know. Which I like those movies. Yes. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> Is very much a sequel. Uh, a couple buys a house from the buys the house from the slum, slumlord tapes, which is um, in this film, thirteen and fourteen cameras. So fifteen cameras is about thirteen, fourteen cameras. Very meta. So yes, um, it's not as safe as they tell themselves. 
So mm, this movie is very much about voyeurism mm. and the oh, need. You're starting to robot again. Mm. Hey, try now. This movie is very much about voyeurism. Okay, it did a little bit, but I could hear you that time. Okay. But they don't want me to talk about 15 cameras. Nobody wants the proof to come out. I will maybe try not sharing my screen to see if that helps. Okay. How's that? Still a little bit. Might be because of the weather you may be having, too. But it's not snowing or anything here. Oh, it's not? Oh, okay. Just for you. Yay. All right. I'll try to finish yep. it off. Okay? Yeah, it's better now. All right. Maybe it was sharing the screen, Scotty. So we'll just have to, we'll just have to, you know, go bareback. I'll use my phone. So. All right, we'll go bare back until we get to it. All right. So all right. um let me pull up my documents now. I'm all thrown off. Anyway, back to what else I talk about? 15 cameras. 15 for, cameras. Forever. Been talking about this movie as long as it fucking ran for. It was an 89 minute runtime. And this movie is about voyeurism. It's also like <laughs> It's also basically brings in the guy from the original films, the uh, the killer from the first two films. It's if you like the first two and you kind of want to see what they do with this, I will say the movie gets better as it goes on. You do have to really stick with it. I wouldn't say it's great. It's definitely not great. But if you like the 13 and 14 cameras and you have access to this, it is available on Google Play, Apple TV, Vudu, Microsoft Store, YouTube, then I would say rent it and watch it. Otherwise, you're probably good to pass on this bad boy. Um, it was it was interesting. I will give it that. It was interesting. It kept my attention. I was able to finish watching it. Um, okay. Please King camera films. Love, Heather. <laughs> so, the next one is deep fear and that's like how matt feels every time i tell him i'm coming over to the uk <laughs> so, uh deep fear is a shark film sharky 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 uh died to survive a solo trip abroad a yacht a solo trip abroad a yacht takes a terrifying turn when a woman encounters three jug traffickers clinging to the shattered remains of a boat they soon force her to dive into shark-infested waters to retrieve kilos of cocaine from the sunken wreck. Who's in this film, might you ask? Well, if you saw a movie called The Shrew's Nest, the main antagonist in that film is in this film. And let me tell you, you know what this has proved to me? Even rich Spanish stars do shitty shark films too, like Jason <laughs> Now, this wasn't shitty. This was actually a lot of fun. I enjoyed this shark film for what it is. Um, I thought that the main girl was likable, also happened to be very beautiful. So was her handsome husband. Like, everyone was good looking in this fucking movie. And I appreciated that with, like, except for the villains. The villains were all not that attractive. Uh, but it was a good film. If you like shark films, this is definitely worth watching. Is it the best shark film? No, but. Tim Davis gave it three stars. Um, he called it a crime thriller mixed with sharks that I found somewhat entertaining despite the lack of acting and some effects. I would agree, with the exception of one individual who was probably the best actress uh, because I've seen her in other shit. And she's quite good. Uh, though it is English. It's weird. They all speak Spanish fluently, but yet they're all speaking in English. It's very, very... And it's not dubbed. Like, it's they're speaking filmed in English. So huh. if, if you like shark films, you can find this one on Apple TV, Voodoo, YouTube, Microsoft Store, and Amazon Video. All right. One more before we bring in the big guns. All right. Phantom Fun World. I was curious about this one. I liked it. I liked it a lot. This is a 81-minute runtime. This is on a Tubi, if you're interested. The employees of an indoor amusement park face a nightmarish reality when a killer emerges fixated on the park's fictional character. Amidst the carnival atmosphere, survival becomes a twisted game in this chilling till of haunted passes. This is an independent film, and this is fucking low budget done right. Now, this is true low budget. I'm talking super hot level, live screen level low budget, okay? Like, okay. I'm talking real low budget. It is a well done slasher. The characters are affable enough. The acting is good enough. It is easy to watch. And if you are interested in this, and remember, we're talking about a low-budget slasher here, so you got to go in here with realistic expectations, this is available on the Tubi. So nice. I think 
rewatch. It is totally worth it. You have no reason not to watch it. Um, the other options are you can watch it on Amazon Video for renting or buying it. I would say Tubi is fine. You're probably not going to have a lot of like commercials or anything in it. It was released in the UK in 2020 in uh, October 17th. I don't know. I feel like Matt's going to watch it and hate it and complain. But I liked it. I thought it was a fun little independent slasher. Just go into this knowing it is an independent slasher. Uh, and it's good. It's it's entertaining for what it is. Now we have the big guns. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'll bring this one in to give you a little break. Uh, so we are talking newest theatrical release. And that is new as of a couple days after American Thanksgiving. And that is Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. Uh, it's got a 106-minute runtime. There will be no leftovers. After a Black Friday riot ends in tragedy, a mysterious Thanksgiving-inspired killer terrorizes Plymouth, Massachusetts, the birthplace of the holiday. Picking off residents one by one, what begins as random revenge killings are soon revealed to be part of a larger, sinister holiday plan. So this was something I was, a lot of us probably horror fans were excited for because a lot of us had seen the Grindhouse trailer that went along with uh, Planet Terror and mm -hmm. Death Proof back in like 2007 or whatever it was. And always was, people were always wanting to see a full length movie of this one and this trailer would the grindhouse trailer would always get shared around thanksgiving by our horror communities and for good reason just we don't get a lot of good thanksgiving uh, american thanksgiving or canadian thanksgiving horror films no. so it's uh, a nice little surprise to see this has been tackled and that eli roth wins with it and holy shit this was so fucking fun. Like, I'm not the biggest Eli Roth fan. I like a couple of his films. Like, most, none of them I hate, but I just, mm -hmm. he's also just not the greatest. But, man, this was a awesome throwback to 80s, 90s slashers with the reasoning for the killings, having, like, this revenge, um, a mix of unlikable and likable characters, uh, actors portraying high schoolers that are like 25 years old or older. Um, some amazing gore, especially for the theater. I was not expecting to see this level of gore on screen. Um, yeah, baby. I just had a fucking blast with this film. This is a, another top 10 contender for me for the year. So, of course, Scott's heard me talk about this obsessively. This film was filmed up the street from me. I know exactly the high school it was filmed in because literally I live five minutes away from it. So the whole time they were filming in that high school, I was losing my fucking mind. <laughs> um, and it also tells me it's super dated. There's a part that I actually saw filmed. So across yeah. from the high school is the gym I go to. And I saw the truck scene where the guy comes up and tries to get the kids to buy guns. I saw that scene being filmed. That's um, awesome. Which is pretty cool, right? So I thought they did a great job of turning this can and this was filmed over like three weeks in March up here. Um, they they filmed the high school scenes over March break. So the whole thing was, and I, there was a lot of actually local Hamilton kids that were in those scenes, like the background scenes, like where there's all those students. Those yeah. were students from the high school that were oh, that's cool. Yeah. So there was a bunch of kids that went to go see themselves in the movie, right? So um, I thought that was pretty fun. I thought this was a great slasher. I know that some people really like, I know Tim felt disappointed because he felt that it was, it was blown up, but you know, I compare this to something like killer book club. This was a lot better than killer book club. Yeah. Uh, I think the uh, Rick Hoffman was in this. He's always fucking great too. I always enjoy seeing him. And I, I don't know. I thought he kind of knew who probably was responsible throughout it, but it was fucking fun. And the kills were chef's kiss. Like we're talking some amazing fucking practical effects. Ones with dumpsters, uh, the freezers, um, trampolines, other things. Like everything was utilized fucking beautifully in this film. And I felt there was a little bit happy birthday to me um, tribute. Did you get that too? Yeah, a little bit. Right? I thought that was uh, that was kind of fun. Eli Roth done right. And you know what? I want to thank Eli Roth because I went and saw this in the Canadian theater. 
and it we have Cineplex who has like a pre-show thing that they always show and E. Ry Loss was giving a, an interview and he straight out said yeah we filmed this all throughout Ontario and he listed the location he's like we filmed this in Hamilton and Toronto like he gave the time to actually shout out on a show that he knew was going to be shown in Canada theater Canadian theaters where it was actually filmed. oh that's cool right And, like, talked about how much he enjoyed filming in those locations. And I was like, thank you for acknowledging that and saying where you filmed it. And, like, giving some props when you know it's going to be shown to a bunch of Canadians that are going to recognize all the locations and acknowledge it. I thought that was really cool that he did that. I like him. I've always liked his films. I think he's a creative dude. And I look forward to seeing more from him. This was a great little slasher in 106 minute runtime. I don't think you can go wrong. And for us, it's still in the theaters. I don't know where it is for you. Yeah, I think it's still going here as well. And I think it's been doing pretty damn well. Again, another horror theatrical or another theatrical horror film doing great in theaters. Um, one thing, a couple of little things for me, like, uh, so Eric and I went to go see this last Saturday in theaters. And one thing I thought was cool was uh, our our cinema, Rave Cinema or Cinemark, we walk in and I just say, you know, the time and say for Thanksgiving. And they go, oh, all right, well, here's your free poster. They gave us mini posters of Thanksgiving. Like, That's and cool. It's, and, they, and it's double-sided. So it's got like the one like theatrical style look poster. And then on the back end of it, it has a uh, coloring book version that you can color in and do what you want with it. I was like, that is awesome. So... I am That's definitely really cool. going to be framing those bad boys in my uh, basement, uh, hanging them up. Um, and then, yeah, watching Erica's reactions to this, because she's not about intense gore. And these kills, like, she was, like, hiding her eyes and averting her face. And I just, I was enjoying every bit of that so much. <laughs> you were like, I like watching her suffer. Um, I, you know, what's funny is that I think he told me that your theater wasn't super busy, right? Yeah, I think it had probably about, 15 people maybe so the interesting thing was i think because word got out in this area that it was filmed in this area it was busy so i feel like we probably got posters but they probably like were gone probably because i think that like it was one of the busier films i've been to in a long time um that's, that's awesome over there yeah and i think it had a lot to do with it being filmed local so it probably did yes you know totally check it out great probably one of our last theatrical release horror films i can't think of anything else that may be coming out well it's a wonderful knife will be coming to streaming so but that uh, yeah. that did go to theaters for a little bit um yeah i don't i can't think of anything else off the top of my head yeah me neither i think uh i think the horror choo-choo train is coming to a slow down halt and i am sitting at 181 and 2023 yeah. let's see Sorry. You're probably a little bit behind me, I feel like. Not <laughs> you are uh, way ahead of me, for sure. I'm at 127. Ah, oh, still. Still. So, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll probably get to about 135, 140 before, like, well, maybe a little more before uh, we do our year-end show. Yeah, I don't think I'll break 200 this year, but that's okay. Um, you know, and, and I'll probably do even less last next year because I'm in the office now. Uh, right. I was home primarily for a majority of this year, so... But yeah, it's been a, it's been a slice 2023. I'm looking forward to whatever kind of feelers. I do want to see when Mary had a little lamb. I uh, yeah, I, really um, I believe that. that is on one of our friends Plex account. It should be yes, I believe because I requested it. So um, I'm excited to see that. I do want to watch that one. I um, did uh, notice it was uh, uncorked, so be prepared. Oh, I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. I know what that's going to be. Like, I went into Winnie Pooh expecting what I watched, right? Right. Um, so for older watches, I, I found this random one called Timber Falls. Uh, one of our friends added it to his plex, and it was one of the weirdest fucking films I've seen in a long time. So a weekend of camping in the mountains becomes an excursion into hell for a young couple who become pawns in a grotesque plot hatched by terrain local, deranged locals. Um, this is like if uh, the original Wrong Turn mixed with Hills Have Eyes, mixed with Hostel, mixed with some ultra-religious film had a baby. Oh, and mixed with Eden Lane. Hmm. Um, it's interesting. Like, it's it's one of those films that really aren't that great, but you can't look away at the same time. 
definitely a product of the 2007 films. This was probably released to not a lot of fanfare because I had never heard of it. Uh, did you ever hear of it? It seems familiar, but that could just be the name itself. Timber Falls just seems... Not to be confused with Cherry Falls. <laughs> right. <laughs> the horny movie. The horny movie. Um, this also has to do with sex, actually. Oh, good. Uh, yes, yes. It's keeping up the theme. I would say if you like a mixture of the films, and this is funny, someone put the Wish version of Wrong Turn, that's really funny. I, uh, I, I think that's fairly accurate, but I have a soft spot for films like these. I enjoy this t- those 2000 films with, that were all kind of the same. I like that shit. I, uh, I find great comfort in it. So I'm be that you know person one day looking back in the 2000s, like, oh, I remember when uh, those good old Final Destination films came out. Oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, they were in Legend sequels. Timber Falls, yeah, fuck yeah. Cherry Falls, fuck yeah, yeah. I always love the, like, the teenage fucking ain't shit. It's, it's always fun times. So this was entertaining and interesting. If you can watch it for free, I recommend it. I see that it's here on Amazon and Screenbox. Amazon, Amazon, you can buy it as a disc that tells you how, like, mint it is. And then otherwise, you just got to watch it on Screenbox. So it's a little uh, a little challenging to find. And if anyone still found Boys in the Trees in Canada, yeah. please let me know. Yeah, I was going to say, I just noticed Lance Langford was watching it, like, a couple days ago. Oh, and I'm going... Um, Just like I told Kate Pollock, I'm like, this movie doesn't exist. I don't honestly, believe you're watching this. I, I'm going to look it up right now. Boys in the Trees. Because this is the film that if you and I can watch by the end of this year, we should probably do a review on it. All right, let's see here. Okay, in the U.S. it says you can watch it on Google. You can yeah, it. Which I have no access to really besides on my phone. At YouTube as well. Hmm. Um, apparently you can also watch it on YouTube. Probably to run. Yeah, right? And then there's one that apparently seems to be free on here, but it's subtitled in Italian. Huh. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but uh, yeah. So there you go. I can't watch it. Maybe you can. I still don't have access. Yeah, I'm looking to, just out of curiosity. Yeah, Apple TV, Google Play, and YouTube is where it looks like it's available. In USA. USA, USA. But yeah, oh, that is something we'll have to like maybe hunt down at some point. Hunt it down, baby. Hunt it down. But yeah, I guess we're slowing down now into our movies. We're, as we kind of just talked about earlier, we're uh, beginning to wrap this shit up and getting ready for our end of the year. So depending on what we watch in the next couple of weeks, our next show may just be an end of the year show. Yeah, might just be the. Uh... Yeah, it might be the award show. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah, like, it's also going to be dependent on our, like, schedule because, like, you know, the holidays are rolling in and, like, I got a lot of Christmas parties to go to. Oh, wow. My name's Scott. I'm so popular. Look at all my Christmas parties. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what? So do I, Scott. I also have lots of Christmas parties because I'm also popular. You are popular, Heather. Just don't listen to yeah. Matt Wood. Yeah, fucking Matt Wood. No, he slut shamed me. That's what Matt Wood does. I'm going to make a slasher about me going after Matt Wood. It'll be great. It'll probably last like five seconds because I'll get tired and be like, Matt, do you want to just go get some food? <laughs> Have some drinks? Let's go, get, let's go to the pub. Let's go to the pub, dude. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I think our next show may just be that because besides It's a Wonderful Night, I don't I don't think there's anything else. Is there anything else releasing on Shutter in December? Let's take a look here. Release uh, I think on it's Shutter. A wonderful, I think It's a Wonderful Knife is dropping on Shutter, and I don't know about anything else. That's I, it. I'm, yeah, and then, uh, well, I mean, Shutter will release their December schedule soon and then uh there's probably some indie films here and there that'll pop up or some international films and stuff on streaming that may pop up but i think i am just going to be doing a lot of catch up on movies that i haven't had a chance yeah. to I same with me i think i'm gonna have to go through your list and look at things that i i missed like the mill 2023 i do want to see um killer book club again i need to watch for the 15th time bury the bride absolutely um the nun too 
God damn it. Just in case I miss some of the important plot lines. Uh, yeah, I, uh, man, I guess we'll see. Awards, here we come. But you know what, we'll have some time, maybe between Christmas and New Year's, once Christmas is done. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, we, you know, we'll just build up our repertoire of what we've seen, and if we have a chance to record one more episode before we do our awards with, like, what we've watched, if there's enough new stuff that we've watched, then we can do a recording, if not, we just kind of just get ourselves in gear. Fuck yeah, we do. And then get ready for 2024, baby! Fuck yeah! You know, live, live screamers came out, which is the sequel to live to live stream, or yeah, what is it, live stream? Live stream. Live stream. So it's live screamers is the yeah, sequel. I, yeah, uh, David Garrett was the one I think that reviewed it. I was like, ooh. But I don't know where we can watch it. Yeah, I think that was a festival watch, so it's probably not available anytime soon. I am very much hoping that this shit becomes available soon. Uh, let's see here. Release date, United States, September. Mm, make it released by the end of this year, because that is definitely something I want to watch. Yeah, that absolutely is. Like, is I, there any 2024s you're excited for? Uh, Terrifier 3, for sure. And it's going to be a Christmas film, which I'm all about. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because there's a teaser trailer that dropped, and uh, yep, it shows Art the Clown dressed as Santa Claus. Oh, oh, and I'm sorry, what were you going to say about live stream streamers? I didn't say anything about it. I thought you were going to say something like you're excited for, too. Oh, I just said Terrifier 3. Oh, right, okay. Have yeah, you I don't seen know the... what... No, no, finish, sorry. I said, I don't know what else is coming out. Have you seen the commercial for Night Swim or the trailer for Night Swim? Oh, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. I mean, I'll watch it, but I'm just like, what? I, I don't get it. Mm, okay, that's fair. And there's one called Imaginary. This looks like it may not be too bad. That's coming out in 2024. Looks like it goes one. Oh, Winnie the Pooh, two, oh. five, baby, yeah! Oh, yeah, that will be coming out in 2024. Hell yeah. Right. I'm, I'm excited a, for that. A Quiet Place Day 1. Yeah. Uh, not for law two. Oh shit! Yeah, Robert Eggers' next one. So yeah, Robert I am. Did. And then what else? The first Omen. I don't. Okay. Yeah. The Strangers Chapter Two. Uh, well, actually, we still gotta get the first remake of Strangers. Yeah. So whenever Strangers that comes out. Chapter One as well. So I guess they're both coming out next year. Witchboard. Uh, Lisa Frankenstein. Uh, Untitled Universal Monster Film, uh, The Watchers, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, The uh, New Empire, The Crow, The Home, uh, Stream. Looks like some interesting shit. We'll see what happens. Yeah, see if any of them actually come up next year and what if any of them are going to get shelved. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, sure. Spoken like someone who's been around this for a long time, huh, Scott? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, as always, thank you so much for listening and sticking with us. Um, we hope you enjoyed 2023. Please feel free to go back and look at our episodes. I think it's very unlikely that we will record another episode before our end of the year show. I just don't think there's enough movies for us to talk about. Um, so please go back and look at what we've watched that. We are both on Letterbox. If you want to follow us, you can just look at that by our name. I think that's how you look at people on Letterbox. Um, yeah, but, well, you I look up by heather.pwll0 or whatever it is. And then yes. for me, I think I'm now like it's either Veil Hawn or Smoke Show. So you have either one of us to look up if you're looking for, and Letterbox is a great app, by the way. If you haven't downloaded yet, it's free and it's fucking awesome. It's yeah. a great way to track your films. Um, of course, you can go through our Facebook as well and see what we've watched. And let's see what this year brings as we come to an end. It's been an interesting year. I think we'll have an interesting discussion. Um, I think our list will look very different. Yes, and I think our awards will be kind of a mix, of, like we usually do, mix of some same and some that are different. Like I, yeah. But yeah, it's been an interesting year. And yeah, I'm going to try to knock out some of the ones that you've watched and recommended and then just kind of fill out my list and kind of start working on uh, – getting the awards together to send to you so we can get working on that. Fuck yeah, we will. I am pumped for this shit. Um, I can't wait. One of my favorite one things of, to do at the end of the year. Yep, same. I'll say one of my favorite episodes to ever record. Well, it's been a slice as always, Scotty. Um, for all those who are listening, we are 
proud mention members of the Legion Podcast Network. And they also have a Patreon that you could join to get caught like that, blah, 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 to get promos for like free, oh my God, free credits for stuff. Yep. <laughs> and also there's episodes that are released early and you support your favorite podcasters. And if you are not, for some reason, a member of Legion Patreon, and you have been with us since the beginning, because we're 10 episodes away from 100, baby. What do you have to say to the good people, Scotty? What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for me to release another episode? What the <laughs> hell? You just give up already. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Hey, you know what, though? At least you slow it down at the end of the year. We're literally, we have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> right. We managed to do two episodes of 2023, so this one episode. So everyone, you got what you need. You've got the goods. We told oh, you the good, the bad. Got what I need. You've got the good and the bad and the fucking ugly of this year. We have given it to you. Oh, like yeah, we have. Pants this year. We no have protection lots, whatsoever. None. Basically, we just kind of went in at it and just made you take it like a champ. And hopefully, we've given you some good stuff. We've had the year of and 10 entries into films. This has been the year of random sequels with 15 cameras and licensed stuff becoming unlicensed. Exorcisms yes. fucking galore everywhere you turn to motherfucking exorcism. Pregnancy films, honestly, the year of like being knocked up and your life sucking because you're pregnant. It has been a fucking slice, and we have been here for all of it. Fuck yeah, we have. <laughs> and we will be bringing our award show, the best award show out there. More important than the Oscars. Like, Ab oh, absolutely. Way more important than the Oscars. So we look forward to seeing you for our award show. We will be bringing the fire. And, of course, giving our unsolicited opinions. On and unsolicited dick pics. Absolutely. That is the one thing we find. I love sending my dick cock out to people so they can see it. Um, everyone but Matt Wood, because that doesn't make him comfortable. So That's why I'm I sent him to him. I'm excited for, for us to... I feel like we should almost be funny to do a prediction of what each other's top ten will be. Like, ridiculous top ten. Like, you have mine, Killer Book Club is number one you know oh that would be whoops, fun bury the bride and i don't know the top 10 gaslit films for heather the ta top 10 gaslit films for heather yeah you know or what was the one you watched about the fucking monkey or was it a possum or sloth oh, sloth slother house slother house <laughs> that shit was fucking hilarious and it was like a puppet wasn't it yeah that shit was great like, we started this year with Megan, There's Something Wrong with the Children, Candyland, Snowfalls. Oh, Snowfalls is where the gathering began, remember? Yeah, oh, how can I fucking forget? And you were all like, these people are idiots, they don't deserve anything, Heather, what is fucking wrong with you? <laughs> Viking Wolf, oh, do you remember that one on Netflix? That was fucking good. The yeah, chicks seems I was like, the that seems like it was like three years ago. Right? <laughs> Or Project Wolf Hunting? Holy that shit. one I didn't watch. Oh, that is that, my friend. You have to watch. You yeah, that's what I'm going to try getting a chance to watch if I can. I'm glad we're kind of going over this now, actually. Um, <laughs> what else was here? The Strays, another good fucking movie. A Spoonful of Sugar, not bad. Cocaine Bear uh, came out. <laughs> Cocaine Bear, fuck yeah. Unwelcome, that was a good one as well. Remember? People aren't talking about Remember anymore, but that was a really fucking cool movie too. Yeah. Uh, oh, Scream 6. <laughs> and looks like there won't be a Scream 7. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put my entry out there just to let everybody know. Like, yeah, I'm not going to be in Scream 7 either. Oh, you're not? Oh, uh, man. No one's coming for Scream 7 then. Sorry, guys. Oh, uh, shit. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to bother to go watch it then if you're not in it. What's the fucking point? I know. It's... <sighs> They weren't paying me enough. Oh, it's fair. You know what? It's definitely, it's all about the money. The, front, the big money we make here on Friday Night News Podcast. So, yeah, make sure you go back and you look at our list, because even I'm looking back at shit but now, being like, oh, shit, we watched that shit? That was good, actually. Oh, yeah. Well, you know me. I'm, you know me, and when it comes to the award show, I, I go crazy over it and spend, like, almost an entire week 
thinking on my options. You, you, you analyze. You're very good at that. Anyway, um, what do you have to say to the good people, Scotty, who have supported us all year round, stood by us as our lives have changed, and gone through the journey that is 2023? Yeah, I got to say thank you to everybody. Uh, happy, uh, happy Thanksgiving to all of uh, the Americans out there, and, you know, uh, belated happy Thanksgiving to all you Canadians. And then uh, if we're not here by the time the holidays happen, happy holidays. Stay frosty. Gobble, gobble, motherfuckers. <laughs> um, but yeah, we will be back uh, more than likely with our award show. So uh, hopefully by the time you hear this, it'll still be December. <laughs> and uh, we'll have an episode probably out by uh, January. I think you'll have it out in December. I think you'll yeah. be okay. I'm thinking it'll probably be out within a week or so. We may we may change to a once a month format if that's what works better for us, especially with Scott's lifestyle. Um, you know, it would be nice to do once every two weeks, but that may just be challenging. We just gotta make it to that episode 100, Scotty. Yes, because we gotta we do gotta the do uh, favorite uh, favorite movies of our since we started doing this. That's right, and we've come a long way together. Just like that song, do the hard times and the good. I gotta that's celebrate right. you, Scotty. <laughs> I gotta praise you like I should. I gotta praise you! Anyway. All right, everyone. Peace out. Have a great holiday season. Yep. Until next time, kitties. Unpleasant dreams. See ya. Shit.